Jerome McGinley, Marion Hosa, Kevin Lowe, Doug Wilson went in as players. Uh, Kenny Holland went in as the builder. Kim St. Pierre, uh, she went back to back to back Olympic gold medals uh, on the Canadian women's team. She was elected as well. Uh, I obviously had no issue with again or Hosa. I was almost shocked that Lowe and Wilson got in. I know there was a late campaign for these guys. Um, one of them, actually, I have one was in his 20th year of eligibility. Lowe was, Wilson was in his 25th year of eligibility. I guess my problem, guys, with the voting is for the last 25 and 19 years, these guys weren't in the Hall of Fame. They get a late rally. The media kind of presents these cases for them, and then they get in, and you're like, all right, Alexander McGillney was the first fucking Soviet to defect. He risked his life to come here to play hockey, to get paid to play hockey. He didn't know if the KGB was going to come slit his throat in the middle of the night, kidnap him, take him back to Russia. None of that stuff. And he was fucking on top of that, a fantastic player. And it's not the NHL Hall of Fame. It's the Hockey Hall of Fame. And that's just one example. You could pick seven other guys who should have gotten in. I just think that the voting... And, and I'm not attacking anyone's character. Hey, I care for what I say. I wrote it on Boston. I think sometimes people just get... Go screwed. at someone, R.A. Right? Pick somebody. <laughs> All right, Come on, R.A. Right? Make some news. <laughs> There's and nothing think, going on. <laughs> you know, you're talking about an 18-member selection board where two-thirds of them are Canadian. You got one Swede, one Finn, one Russian. And I think that just that representation for other parts of the world and other foreign players don't get in there. And guys tend to, send, uh, tend to go with their biases. And they don't do it on purpose. I'm voting for my buddy. But I think they make up a case in their head while oh, if we don't get him in now, he's never going to get in. And meanwhile, other guys aren't getting in that. Maybe deserve it more. Let's go to you first, Whit. Fucking right, sorry, by the way. Thank you. Great, great argument. I mean, a passionate case. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say, um, if you look at Mo Gilney's career numbers, over a point per game, 990 games, he had over a point per game. And what he did in coming over, as you brought up, is just... It's a shame he's not in. Just a complete snub. And you want to see hockey in, in some of its finest form? Find a way to maybe get in touch. And the Sabres could use a little love, I guess, right now. Find a way to get the highlights of the year that he had 76 tucks, 92, 93. And watch these clips along with his overall career and his overall performance and his Stanley Cup, correct, all right, if I'm wrong? Yes, that was yes, the His Stanley Cup. How, how? What are you doing? You gotta, you gotta get this guy in. It's just, it's just. I, I think that at some point he will, like you said. But it is so odd to see, as as it, it's true. I mean, guys get older, and here's the thing: like people immediately think of Kevin Lowe. I, I don't think of Kevin Lowe and think of a Hall of Famer. I think of him. I, as I put a, him in the. I, I put him in the same category as the Guy Carbonell. Yeah, I think he's a ch like a champion. I, I and it's just when do you when is it all about cups? That's the only reason he's in, right? But w but what an incredible reason to even have the argument over. He's won six Stanley Cups. So so what is what is the criteria? You are are you on a are you on an amazing team? And you were kind of a key cog. You were not like top of the pyramid of that amazing team, but you were there. Is that the Hall of Fame? I don't, I don't really think so. I'm not, but I said, I said the guy, the guy, he was a legitimate champion. So it's kind of like, what do you describe as a Hall of Famer now? It seems to be with the Carbono biz as well, it, the tides are changing. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a great argument. And RA, to go back to you, I don't, I don't put enough, um, thought into it like you do you're a little bit more old school and you know how it all goes so that's why i don't even begin to bitch um i was surprised no theo flurry and that's another name that kind of pops up in the mcgillney category like you you talk to a guy like ray whitney and ray whitney's a guy who probably won't get in but he's like one of those guys like where you look at his stats and, and how long he played for and the longevity and how small he was and he'll tell you and he's been around every era. He was a stick boy for the Oilers when they were winning their cups. You know what I'm saying? And then he played every which way with all these different Hall of Famers. And he's he said it all. He said Theo Fleury paved the way for every little guy who was drafted and who could play after him. And he fuck and 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 over a point a game in regular season, over a point a game in playoffs, and a Stanley Cup champion. That guy. That guy is the epitome of, of a hockey player, especially during those times. And th there'll be a small fraction of you that say, yeah, but his politics online, I'm going to say, I don't give a fuck about his fucking politics online. 
Okay. Yeah, what that guy had to overcome from, from a, from a life standpoint to do what he did afterwards and to accomplish what he accomplished, he should be in the fucking hall of fame, whatever. I digress because maybe they're just saying, yeah, there's plenty of more years where he'll be able to get in fine. But yeah, I, I guess I get a little bit surprised when maybe McGilney and a few other names that are popping up more frequently aren't in and then certain guys are, but Hey, listen, I'm not going to take anything away from Kevin Lowe because that guy has more fucking skill in his pinky toe than I did my entire body during my entire career. So, and that goes to more what you were saying, Whit. Yeah, his teammates love, loved him. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's block it's, shots. So, it, it, it it's like you end up chirping a guy who had this amazing career just because you say you don't think he's necessarily the Hall of Fame. I, I will say I want to go over to – um, two of the decisions that no brainers no brainer. a- asked, asked about these guys five year with five years to go in both their careers. Um, how many years did Hosa play after they won the cup in Chicago? Well, uh, I digress. We knew Hosa and, and Jerome Ginla were first ballot and uh, just getting the chance to play with Marion Hosa was the, one of the biggest treats I ever, I ever had in my life. This guy was a joy to be around. He was a legitimate tank. You couldn't even move him. Like, I, I saw this guy first time. He's 230, 6'1", 230, rock. And he's flying around. He actually came to Pittsburgh in the huge trade when we lost our buddy Colby Armstrong, our boy Army. Him, Eric Christensen, um, Angelo Esposito, or a draft pick. Either way, it was a huge trade. And he came over and he got hurt right away. First game, like, like I think MCL sprain, like I think he was out two, three weeks. You know, that sucks, right? You're getting dealt over in a, in a team that's trying to make a run and all of a sudden you're sitting out. You don't know the guys that well, but everyone just knew how good he was. He came back and was the sickest player. Like defensively, every, you, you were just in awe of him every night. He never got tired and he would play both sides of the puck. He'd get in a goal and an assist. He'd be perfect defensively. He'd, and, and, and the whole time, he's just the nicest guy in the world doing it. So somebody who lost the cup in Pittsburgh goes to Detroit to, to win the cup, then loses to his old team, then goes to Chicago that third year and gets it done and then gets two more. So deserving, so happy for him. And I would love if we could get him on. He'd be such a good interview just because he's like, he'd make us feel good about ourselves. You know what I mean? Biz, he might give us a couple fake laughs. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, oh, he's just I'd that love good a, of a guy. I'd like, love a just... fake laugh from host. <laughs> 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 Call him up, man. I could use a few. Um, going back, I'll, I'll talk about, I mean, Jerome McGinley, you said no brainer, uh, Dmitry Filipovic. This guy's always got some awesome tweets. Oh yeah. Great Twitter. Jerome McGinley's run in Calgary was epic. Here are his stats there from 1996 to 2013, nine, uh, 1219 games, 525 goals, 1095 points, and just under 4,000 shots. Here's the second best total by a member of the Calgary Flames in that same time frame. 826 games, 123 goals, 308 points. Martin Jelena. Probably, yeah. But it's he carried a, a, a franchise guessing. for over a decade. And talk about a guy who could put the puck in the net, but when things got dirty, he could handle his own fucking business. And that, like, it, it, when you're living in Calgary, that's just the, the embodiment, embodiment of being a Calgary Flame. And I think that, that he was an absolute no-brainer. And he did an interview today that I watched, and he's just, like, smiles, so humble. He said he couldn't sleep the last couple nights either. So you could just tell how much it meant to him and, and very well-deserving. He, he actually played recently at uh, Old Sandwich Golf, Golf Club where I shot 66 last week. We'll get into that later. Um, and he was behind me. I think he's with Brooks Orpik. I didn't get the chance to see them. We were separated, but I would love to, love to talk to Iggy. And let me ask you a question, Biz, just uh, friend to friend. When you think of Jerome again, though, what's uh, one of the things? Give me, give me the first two or three things that pop into your mind. Uh, just from what guys say about him, how awesome or any, he was. No, any particular um, – uh, on ice or off ice, like uh, storylines. Um, he liked to cheat a bit offensively. <laughs> no, you're way off. You're, you're not even close to what I'm trying to say. Oh, okay. I think of Jerome again, and I think of that fight with Vincent LeCavier in the oh, finals. Shit. Dude, oh. two big dogs in the NHL squaring up toe to toe in the Stanley Cup Game finals. Game seven, right? That was. 
Sasuke. No, they didn't fight in Game Seven. Oh, okay. I don't, th- I don't I th- think. All right. Either I'm way, it was, sh- the be- it was the beginning of one of those just, games. Just like that, you said talking about handling his, his business, busy. He was terrifying to play against. I got to Edmonton. I'm like, this guy is a. He said he's on my ass every night. He, 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 first of all, if you turn it over to him, he's burying it. His snapshot was a joke. Just be in the slot one time or done. And then he'd run you over and then he'd talk shit after and be in your face after a whistle. Like just a complete animal. I respected the hell out of him and he was uh, so deserving of getting in. So you feel like, feel bad talking about guys who maybe didn't deserve to get in or get snubbed, but you got to remember the, 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 the players you can't even argue about no matter who they are. And I, if, uh, did you, do, you want, do you want to go a little into depth about Kim St. Pierre, R.A.? Because, like, I mean, back in the day when, when Canada was reigning supreme in women's hockey, I mean, she was the net, net minder. So um, shout out to her. Congratulations. That's awesome. And, and, you know, she paved the way. I love like, it. Like I wrote on my blog, she has more gold than Fort Knox. I mean, she went back <laughs> to back to back, not just played. She was the gold That's, team Canada, women's team, three golds, plus all the world championships. I mean, a stellar resume, you know, they've been adding more women to the Hall of Fame lately, which is nice to see, and she's certainly well-deserved. And I just wanted to go back to Aginla for a second. I mean, you look at his stats. By the way, that fight with LeCavalier was game three, not game seven. I How about my answer cheating offensively a little bit? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can't wait to hear yeah. from everybody online about that one. Yeah, he cheated his way to 1,300 well, I was, points. I, I wasn't necessarily leading you in the right direction, but <laughs> that was one of the funniest moments for me in a long oh, time. Oh, shit. When, uh, you're like, yeah, uh, cycles the puck sometimes too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uses too much clear tape on his socks. Uh, <laughs> hey, that was, hey, that might have been worse than the time you asked me how many games it took Henderson to, to ha- get that many points, and I was like, uh, 400. <laughs> 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 no, also, or, or it was, or it was as bad as me thinking that um, that the wizard was ninety three. <laughs> Again, though, also, I mean, he was part of a, a trade that and rocked two franchises. I mean, Calgary loved him. He came with a, a, a piece of tape of winning a cup up there, and of course, they traded him for Joe Newendike, who won the Conn Smythe for Dallas back in '99. So that was a huge trade when it happened. I mean, Calgary doesn't regret it, but they came oh so close back in '04, Game well, Six. They were what do you mean honest. a piece of tape? That was a goal. Calgary won that series in six, guys. Yeah, hey, did was you see? Th- did you see the overhead angle? Hey, Rick, hey, Rick from Red Deer is. I mean, in your mind, they have angle. a Hall of Famer and they have a Stanley Cup. It's, you yeah. know, it's, oh. it's, I agree with you, Biz. I mean, they've gotten screwed on a couple of different instances here. Who got and, screwed harder, the Calgary Flames or the Buffalo Sabres? That's a fucking toss up. Throw that up on the, on oh. the, what do you call it? What do you call those, Grinelli? Twitter Pull. poll. Twitter polls. There it is. Twitter polls. All right, boys. Uh, so, yeah, that's it the Hall of Fame. Obviously, Kenny Holland, I mentioned him, too. It's funny. I had a couple of uh, Red Wings fans complaining about him. Like, he didn't do it. It was Jimmy Delvano and Scotty Bowman, and he gave out bad contracts. I'm like, buddy, fight with the committee here. I'm just fucking – I'm just the messenger here. I, I had no problem with Kenny People Holland going in. don't think Ken Holland had anything to do with those teams? Dude, they That might be the – that's like saying uh, Ryan Whitney has nothing to do with spitting chiclets. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Four cups, you'd think they'd be grateful. <laughs> I tell you what, if he could do it to Edmonton, give him the Hall of Fame for fucking Christ's oh, sake. If he gets, yeah, oh, if he gets it, give if him Edmonton the Hall wins of Fame. the cup in a non corona <laughs> pandemic year, just name it the Hall and Hall of Fame. <laughs> 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 that was oh that was so oh, bad. It was God good. Damn it. Oh my, oh uh Doug Wilson, by the way, great career. Uh, but also, fuck, he could get in as a builder as well for what he's done in San Jose. If they can win a cup, he should get in for sure to sustain that uh, that greatness Wait, for so Doug long. Doug Wilson? Doug Wilson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and honestly, like, I didn't, I didn't probably could have clarified more on the blog. I have no problem with Lowe and Wilson. They, they were good players. Great. Wilson was a great player. He was your prototypical offensive defenseman. He won a uh, Norris by the 82. A great player. But like you Handsome said, when, fella you're, too, when you're watching guy, him and, and Lowe, it wasn't like, oh, these guys are on the way to the Hall of Fame. And, you know, I, I was, like I said, it's no diss to them or their career or what their accomplishments were. I was just surprised that they got in on these late ballots compared to other guys who didn't get in. 